in three, two, one. Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us at the Big Time Talker Podcast. I'm Burke Allen. We are doing the show live today from Chicago and the McCormick Place Convention Center for the American Library Association's annual conference and exhibition. Although we're inside a glass-enclosed studio with thousands of people around us, uh, New York Times number one best-selling authors are here. All the big publishers are here. Book agents, book publicists, the entire literary community has converged on Chicago, and we are so pleased to be here to take over the podcast studios made possible by the Next Generation Indie Book Awards and our friends from SpeakerMatch.com, the world's largest online virtual speakers bureau. Let's get to it. We've got a Chicagoland author, an award-winning Chicagoland author. J.J. Mays is here. You may be familiar with her first book, Walk in the Sunrise. Uh, it was a, in, in 2018, Golden Astor Book World Literary Prize winner, won a Royal Dragonfly, uh, a Red Ribbon winner. Her new book is Music Notes, Tales from an American Singer. J.J. Mays, welcome to the booth. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you on the podcast. Um, if you are a musician, I think you're going to enjoy this book. J.J., uh, should I call you J.J. or Jane? What do you prefer? Either one is fine. I go by both. As long as yeah. I call you. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> call uh, me, yes. <laughs> she's a singer, composer, educator here in Chicago. Um, how did you get into the music world? Uh, I knew since I was age five that I was meant to be a singer, and I wrote little songs back then. And how did you know? Uh, I, I just do. I don't even know. Like, nobody guided me or anything. It was just like, if you ask me what I was going to do, I said, I'm going to be a singer. At five years old. Yeah. My first song was a blues about, like, a couch. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, if there's anything that needs blues, it's a couch. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you sing professionally. Uh -huh. You compose. Um, and by the way, if you want to visit JJ online, it's Jade Mays with a Z, jademays.com. Now you're writing. There is a transition there from one discipline to the other, but there are also some similarities, right? A little bit. Uh, 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 the creative flow is a similarity, and I write lyrics, so words, similarity. Yep, yep. Um, I think the main reason like I like writing, because it's a nice balance to singing, is Singing is always collaborative. <laughs> you yeah. always have a band. You right. always have something, a producer. There's always somebody. Writing is just total freedom for me. I can I do what I wish, and hopefully it gets edited nicely and I, people like it. <laughs> you, um, I want to ask you before we get into the new book, the Music Notes book, about your first book. Sure. Because you deal with some pretty tough stuff in there, and you put it all out there. Uh, that first book, Walking Until Sunrise, Pretty raw. It um, was very raw. Yeah. And you, um, you were a runaway when you were 15 years old. I was. Here? No, that was in California. Tell me about um, going back in time and peeling away the layers where you suppressed that story and. And was it emotional for you again to have to sort of relive all that trauma? It was, but not not in the way that it, you would imagine it to be. Because I had I had quite a bit of counseling, a, total, a lot of therapy, really in depth um, eye movement desensitiz desensitization reprocessing therapy, which is literally it's, for me it was physical. Like um, so, I had done so much work around this before I started writing this book. Okay. But even so, <laughs> um, it was just, it was more, uh, like I just needed to withdraw from the story versus re-feel it. And um, that's what these little short funny stories came from. So. When you, um, when you do go back through and you look at all that and you did some things right, you did some things wrong. If there was someone listening right now, maybe a young person who's listening who's in a bad situation and they think, I, I gotta go, I gotta get away from this. Yeah. What, what advice and counsel would you give to them as somebody who was there at, yes. at one point? Well, I think the really cool thing about now in the present time is there are so many um, opportunities like in your face about how to get help. You know, like hotlines, 
crises hotline. It doesn't really matter as long as just any crises hotline for whatever you're going through, they'll get you where you're going. We have another. Yeah, but um, that was that was not a happening when I was 15 years old. So I just didn't know like who to talk to. I didn't really trust anybody. Uh, the big mistake people who have have no reason to run away make is that they are always trying to fix the family, and some families just aren't fixable. You know. Sometimes you have to go and pick your own family, right? Yes, you do. And so you, the outside help that is in a safe, private space is the most important thing to seek, I would say. I was looking at the, the studio window here and saw you chatting with Joe Coleman. Who I is, know. Yeah, member of the Voices of Classic <laughs> Soul, lead singer of the Platters for 20 years. Yeah. Another great vocalist. A super vocalist. I'm, su I'm starstruck, yes. <laughs> When you sit down with another singer, and you did a lot of that in your new book, Music Notes, mm -hmm. when you sit down with another singer, some people do it very differently, but there have to be some threads of commonality amongst how you approach the craft, right? Yes. Um, I think, so you have uh, just organically natural singers that I considered myself, I got my education in music like later on in life, because I was a high school dropout, but right, I ran right. away. Yep. Um, but I do have a Masters from Northwestern now that I'm proud of. And a girl. Yeah. <laughs> well played. Um, but so, like, I can really relate to where he's coming from. It's just a, a spiritual uh, thing, and you either you either have the, the talent with the core tone and all that stuff or not. Um, and then there's singers, uh, there's choir singers. That's a very different kind of singing than people who want to stand up and be a solo singer. Sure. Um, to people who are classical singers, to people who are doing jazz. There's just different reasons why the music, the music moves your spirit. And but the common, there's a lot of common things within all those singers too. And the thing is, you, it's all your your instrument of expression is your voice. Period. Yep. And like you're not whole unless you're doing that, and it's not. Uh, it you can you can teach people to hit notes, but you can't teach that spirit. You know, it's like it's just like some like different dog breeds are made to do different things. <laughs> different singers are made to do different things too. And um, so I just I teach a lot of uh, my students are doing so well right now. Um, I and I t I teach rock singers. I teach Broadway singers. I teach classic and I teach gospel and um, I just try to help them honor the voice basically. And whatever that voice is. Yes. JJ Mays is our guest on the Big Top Talker podcast. Their new book is called Music Notes, Tales from an American Singer. When, when somebody comes up to you and says, hey, hey, you're a singer but you got a book. What, what is this book about? How do you describe the book? Um, I would say it's just little vignettes of life. Most of the stories uh, are in a, some kind of a music setting. Um, but the, the key in this, every single story is from, has a singer in it. So it could, it doesn't even have to be a story about music. It's just the fact that the, the main character might be a singer. Right. Um, and I, I'm working on the second half of this memoir because I left it hanging and people are, are asking me what happened. So it's that material I did not process through therapy and it's very hard to write. Um, this next memoir. So these stories are my breaks from writing that really intense stuff. I'm like, I can't take it anymore, so I go and I write a funny story and then I come back. So yeah. I compiled them, and um, it, they're hilarious. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And I'm going to have another, that's why this one's book number one, because I'm going to have another book because this other memoir is giving me help. So <laughs> I would imagine you, uh, you dove into some dark places on the first book. You're going to do it on the follow-up memoir. But, but this is fun, funny stories. I, I got to ask you, as a, a musician, as a yeah. singer, and as a music educator, who are your favorite singers and why? Oh, boy. Um, boy. I, boy, that's a tough one. Any genre. Uh, okay, of course. I, I love Ella Fitzgerald because her voice is so pure. She was also a runaway, and she also had a very hard life. I didn't know she was a runaway. She was, and she, she always would donate money to... Um, like girls' houses, whatever city she was playing in, because that was her way of giving back. And so I just see her as a total role model. Right. Um, let's see. I like Mick Jagger. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. He's well. Really, his his um, vowels are amazing. <laughs> I don't know That's generally not what I hear women yeah. say about Mick Jagger. His <laughs> vowels are amazing. I right? know. I think he's great. Um, there's. 
the classical singers, I like um, Cecilia Bartoli. She, her voice, is, she's a mezzo-soprano coloratura, and that's so rare that I, being a mezzo myself, I, I like my hat. I'm like, yeah, girl, go get it. And uh, I just love all kinds of music. I really do. Um, I, th I really think I'm really impressed with Billie Eilish nowadays because. Yep. Even though she sings so small, her instrument is huge, and she just controls it so well. So I'm a geek about singing, in case you haven't figured that out. I had no idea. <laughs> do you still go out and perform yourself? I do. I'm getting back into it. I During the pandemic, you know, everything shut down, including right. teaching, singing in person for a long time. So I overcompensated because I was panicking about money. Like I'm like, oh my god, I'm completely out of work. Um, so I was, I've been working like a dog until February of this last year, and now I'm rearranging everything so I can write and sing and te teach a little bit, write and sing more. So coming soon. I just did a performance yesterday, but it was in a park. You know, it was just for like, summer fun. So. We're broadcasting from Chicago in the American Library Association event here at Permit Place. You're a Chicago person. Yeah. This is a great music city. It sure is, yes. And when you got here, because you didn't grow up here. No, I came here in 1994. When you got here, did you immerse yourself into the scene? Was there some place you had to go, somebody you had to meet? You know, like if I moved to Chicago, I would want to find Chess Records immediately to sort of walk on that hallowed ground. Right. Were there places like that or people like that that you just wanted to connect with? Otis Rush. Yeah. And the blues clubs were right. That was my first. I I love Otis Rush. Like <laughs> his music. I sung a lot of his songs. Um, so that was really important to me. Uh, the Green Mill. Um, when I first came here, uh, my kind of singing. It was kind of weird. I had a hard time finding a place because it was. I don't know. It's a mix of rock and jazz and, and soul. Um, so I, I was strangely enough, I found myself on the poetry circuit a lot. Uh, doing like a cappella kind of singing, you know, that was kind of cool. And uh, the Heartland Cafe was my home for years. Uh, it's no longer there in, in the capacity of way up north in Rogers Park, but that's that's where we did our stomping ground of music over there. So. Anywhere you want to sing that you haven't sung in this town yet? Yeah, you, that's you, really you, I want to want to do question. the Metro one time, or I want to do whatever. No, like, boy, that's a really good question. Uh, auditorium Theater. <laughs> All right, we're putting it out there right now. We're putting it out there. Get her in, JJ Mays. All right, I got to ask you one more book question, then I'll okay. let you jump. You talked about music and how you write lyrics, and I wonder. Uh, and you just talked about doing the poetry thing. Mm -hmm. How does all that mesh together? Does it complement one another? Does it? You mean that the writing prose versus lyrics yeah. and that kind of thing? Um, I think the rhythm of lyrics creep, creeps into the prose in a really cool way. I think okay. I'm really blessed to not be doing that other kind of, you know, that other kind of writing. I think it really gives a specific voice to this kind of writing, uh, prose. Um, and it's a balancer because it's a silent activity. Um, I don't hear music in my head when I'm writing a book. I hear music in my head when I'm writing lyrics. So it kind of, it's like a zen zone. Do you write the lyrics first, or do you have the melody first in your head? Melody, bass line, and lyrics, all at once, <laughs> for me. All right, very good. The new book is called Music Notes, Tales from an American Singer by J.J. Mays, yes. and by the way, a finalist at the Next Generation Indie Book Award, so congratulations on that. Thank you, and I have to shout out Ryan Proposo, the illustrator. He's from Indonesia, and he made amazing illustrations for my books. So thanks, Indonesia. Ryan. Indonesia? Yeah. How did you make that happen? Uh, internet, you know. <laughs> the, the worldwide interweb. Yes. You can also pick up JJ's very first book, Walk Until Sunrise, the incredible true story of uh, overcoming a lot. A sequel to that memoir is in the works now as well. JadeMaze.com is the website. Mm -hmm. And Jade Jane is the JJ, just in case you want to know. <laughs> Jade Jane. Yes. <laughs> Jade Maze with a Z. Yeah. Dot com. Hey, thank you so much for coming by the studio today. Thanks so much for having me. I really had a good time. You're very welcome. Uh, the studio is at McCormick Place. We're in the middle of the American Library Association's annual conference and exhibition. As we look out our studio window, there are thousands of people out there at the biggest literary event in America. And we're honored to be here thanks to 
the folks from the Next Generation Indie Book Awards and our show sponsor, SpeakerMatch.com. Thank you for listening to our Big Time Talker podcast. Brand new episodes drop every Tuesday at iHeartMedia, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for listening, and thank you to our celebrity author guest, J.J. Mays. I'm Burke Allen in Chicago, Maine. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Go out and make it a great day. Bye, everybody. Thanks. That was awesome.